Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing two subtypes of supraventricular tachycardia, and those are atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation. Um, these two are fairly common, um, and they're also fairly distinct um, in their EKG patterns from supraventricular tachycardias, even though there's subtypes of it. Um, again, we went into supraventricular tachycardias in the previous video, and one characteristic of these that we saw is that um, the heart rate is greater than 150 beats a minute. Atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation have some features uh, that are fairly distinct from um, the normal supraventricular tachycardias. Now let's get into first atrial flutter, which is sometimes just called A flutter. Now, um, here's the thing about A flutter. Okay? It's going to have these characteristic sawtooth waves, which are also sometimes called delta waves. Okay? Um, if you look and find QRS complexes, okay, those are easy to find. Uh, if you notice between them, you've got this sawtooth pattern between the QRSs. Okay? It actually appears that pretty regularly here between them, there's actually four of them. Here's the first one, here's the second, here's the third, Here's a fourth, okay? There's actually four of them in between each uh, QRS complex. When you have this sawtooth pattern, again, sawtooth waves, also called delta waves, that is a dead giveaway that you've got atrial flutter. In fact, if you're looking on an exam and you see the sawtooth, um, you should check some other things, but again, pretty much right there, you could automatically say it's atrial flutter. That is the giveaway. Now, if we look at these sawtooths in a little more detail, um, technically the first one here, the one that follows the QRS complex, um, this is where the T wave is, okay? Um, however, um, really all of these are also P waves, okay? This one is a little atrial depolarization, here's a little atrial depolarization, here's one, here's another one. So they're all P waves, there's actually four of them, uh, but again, the T wave from the previous QRS complex occurs in the same spot as the first of these little P waves of the sawtooth. So they are, the first hump, they're one and the same, T wave and P wave. But you notice here that you've got a bunch of successive P waves, and that's because the atria are fluttering, okay? They're not fibrillating yet, so they're not like having a seizure, okay? Uh, but they're, they're little small contractions, very, very fast depolarizations that are more or less in a regular pattern. They are fluttering. If you think about a bird's wings, uh, technically they flap them pretty fast, but they flap them in a regular pattern. They're fluttering. Okay? So again, regular predictable pattern, and that's what gives this sawtooth type of pattern, also called delta waves. Um, generally with atrial flutter, um, there's going to be regular RR intervals, although there does not have to be. This is one example where they are regular. And if they are regular, we can do our, our um, typical way of calculating heart rate. So we can count the number of small boxes between two Rs. We'll look at this one over here since this one's already on a solid line. We count over 5, 10, 15, 20, maybe 21, 22. I've got 21 here. So we take 1,500 divided by 21, and that gives us our heart rate in beats per minute. 1,500 over 21 is 71 beats per minute. Okay, So that heart rate is between 60 and 100. So you'll notice not only is it not tachycardic, it's not a supraventricular tachycardia in the sense that the heart rate's bigger than 150, even though this is a subtype of it. Um, that's why when you're looking at this, that, that uh, criteria of being greater than 150 does not work. Okay, What we really want to do is look for this sawtooth pattern. And when we have that, that gives away that we've got atrial flutter. Now, take a good look at that sawtooth. That's atrial flutter. Now atrial fibrillation. Okay, um, Take a look at this right here. Um, do we see a sawtooth? In other words, is it a kind of a regular defined pattern of up and down, up and down, up and down? No. Um, to be honest, this really just looks like you tried to fake a signature. You know, when you have to sign for your, you know, you go to the grocery store, use your credit card, you have to sign the thing, and you're just really quickly doing a scribble. That's almost what this looks like. Um, the way I kind of think about this is what the atria are doing here is they're really having a seizure, okay? Um, it's just fibrillating. It's worm-like. Okay? There's no defined pattern at all. And so with atrial fibrillation, or AFib, those P waves are poorly defined. In fact, there's really no P wave at all. Okay? 
Now there still is a normal QRS complex, and you might be able to see a little bit of a T wave. Um, you can't really see them too well here in this picture. Again, there's one right here. Um, this one's pretty small, but it's there. Um, here's another. This is probably the T wave right here. Um, again, you might be able to see the T wave a little bit better. But the hallmark of atrial fibrillation is you've got this fibrillation between the QRS complexes. This is where the atria are literally fibrillating. They're kind of having a seizure. And because they're fibrillating, they're not really ejecting blood very well into the ventricles. Okay. The other thing that we're going to see with atrial fibrillation, other than these poorly defined P waves, okay, or we could just say this fibrillation, we're having a seizure or worm-like activity, is we have re irregular RR intervals. Okay, um, This one you could probably just eyeball and tell that they're irregular, but again, we can prove it. Take a look at this RR interval, and then we can juxtapose that next to this one, and you can clearly see the RR interval has changed. Okay, Even look at this one over here, this one is really short. So again, when you have these irregular RR intervals coupled with this kind of worm-like activity, um, that's a hallmark of atrial fibrillation. Again, take a very close look and note how this activity between the, the QRS complexes differs from atrial flutter. Atrial flutter, defined sawtooth pattern here. Really just worm-like activity, like you're faking a signature or atria having a seizure, basically. Okay, This is really just static, almost, if you want to think of it that way. Um, going back to atrial flutter, one more thing I want to talk about before we conclude this video is we can talk about the pattern of atrial flutter. Okay, um, You'll notice that between these QRS complexes, here there's a defined number, actually a regular number of these flutters in the sawtooth. Uh, there's actually four of them. One, two, three, four. And you can follow that over here. One, two, three, four. There's four in all of them. Sometimes it won't be a constant number, but generally it is. And so we can actually say this is a four to one atrial flutter. Again, that's because there's four of these peaks in the sawtooth for every QRS complex that we have. So it's a four to one pattern. Okay, uh, we can actually quantify that with atrial flutter. We'll see some other things later on where we can do some similar things. Okay, so hopefully this video gave you a good understanding about how to identify atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation on an EKG. In the next video, we're going to be dissecting the AV node blocks. We're going to see a first degree AV node block, and we're going to see a second degree, um, and both types of that. So join us then. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.